I am here with actor Paul Racy. Um, and uh, he was uh, just in a film called Sound of Metal. Uh, it came out December 4th on Amazon Prime Video. All right. And I, I think it went out into other in theaters as well, but it's very limited, the amount of theaters that came out. Before then, it was out in theaters, but as soon as that hit, there was a, they closed all the theaters down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's unfortunate. Um, I, for one, can't wait to get back into the movie theaters because I really miss it. Um, you know, a, a little bit off, I'm not off topic too much, but I understand like there's this thing with Warner Brothers and, and they're, they're wanting to release all of their films simultaneously in the theater and on HBO Max. Um, and there's a lot of people that think that that's going to hurt the industry. Um, personally, like, I, I am not like this person that says it must be in the theater only. But for me, I love going out to the theater. I my wife and I, we would go out three times a week to see films. So I don't know. They're not factoring my wife and I in that because we're going to keep the industry going no matter what. Not only that, there's that intimate connection you have uh, on that screen that you, it's unforgettable um, and not the same as watching it uh, in your living room in a much smaller screen. I don't care how big you think your screen is. It certainly isn't as big as... It's not like that. No way. <laughs> Very cool. So um, really quick, I guess, tell us a little bit about Sound of Metal. What, it, what was this all about? Well, Sound of Metal, uh, it's a beautiful film about a uh, punk rock drummer who does not do anything to protect his ears uh, while he's playing this heavy metal uh, punk rock. And after a while, it does deteriorate his uh, ability to hear and he quickly uh, starts to lose his hearing. So, uh, uh, it's a, a population of people I think that are hardly ever talked about because a lot of musicians I know, I'm, I've been a musician my whole life. I, I'm, I play in a Black Sabbath uh, tribute band here in Los Angeles. I always have to protect my ears. Um, I'm a, a two-time Vietnam veteran. Uh, the flight deck that I worked on in Vietnam, half the guys that are my age now that survived and are, are walking around like I am, are deaf or hard of hearing because the number one affliction of all of our veterans, no matter what war it's been, is loss of hearing. So here's a guy going through this harrowing experience of losing his hearing. He's a heroin addict, uh, clean for four years, as is his girlfriend, they're traveling around their little band doing uh, gigs. And so they decide to uh, uh, make a stop off at, at a sober house that I, my character runs uh, a sober house for only deaf addicts. And so that's basically, uh, and his dilemma is to whether he's going to try and fix his solution, find a solution to fix his problem, or uh, how is he going to handle this? Because his, it's, a, it's a thing about uh, once your identity is taken away from you, who are you? Or what, you're not going to be a musician anymore. You can't hear anymore. Now what do I do? And the addict's first answer is, I'm going to fix it fix this quick you know yeah the quick fix let's let me let me do what i can to quick make it right so i can just keep on going oh yeah and then we just keep it on like it was before and nothing ever stays the same you know there's always an adjustment that you have to make along life's journey and uh, it can't go back to the way it was sometimes right and and i think as an audience member i was i was wondering and, and almost hoping that he'd persevere and maybe go back into the music. I'm not going to say whether or not that, that happens. I mean, it, it very well could have. I mean, um, I, I don't know much about music. I'm not very musically inclined, but I know that it's, it's somewhat mathematical. Um, I'm not sure about the drums per se. It's partly keeping a beat, but there's some flair that goes into it. So, um, yeah. So yeah. the, this character, Joe, uh, that you played, how did he resonate with you? How did that work out? Well, when I read the script, it was originally uh, an Afghanistan war veteran who lost his hearing in a bombing incident and uh, had experience with addiction. And um, so 
in my own life, uh, I'm, I'm a bad down veteran. As I said, I was a hospital corpsman uh, on an aircraft carrier during the Vietnam War. Um, I have uh, my own addiction experiences in my life stemming from that war. Uh, as a sign language interpreter, uh, I've uh, interpreted for many programs of, uh, for, of addiction. I've uh, run AA meetings. Uh, I've got a lot of experience in that. So in that way, uh, plus my parents were deaf. My mother was latent deaf, but not culturally. She, was, um, uh, she lost the hearing at the age of five. So a lot of what Joe has experienced, there are, there's a population of people we call latent deaf people, people that were not born deaf or grew up, grew up deaf. And so that population is also represented in this movie, as well as other, a lot of deaf layers of uh, people that come from the community. I, yeah, I, there, I was always wondering, like my, my wife and I ran a social event and we would get a lot of latent deaf Yes. Uh, folks come in and want to learn sign language. Um, and, you know, from my experience learning sign language, I was just basically dropped into this family that they all signed. And so, I mean, honestly, that's almost one of the best ways to learn sign language or any oh, language. Yeah. Get right in there. Yeah. Yeah. So how did, um, I guess, uh, so you learned sign language because you're you have family. You're you said I made your mom. It's the first thing I learned. I learned I learned English second. Nice. Yes. Um, yeah. And we talk about that often on the show because my wife uh, is also uh, Akota. Akota. Yes, and she um, also her first language is sign language and learning English. Right. I always say there's three kind of people: there's hearing people, and there's deaf people, and then there's codas because. Your wife is certainly not hearing, but she's not deaf. But I can guarantee you the way she was brought up, she's part of that culture, and yet she's part of your culture. So those, the quotas are a, 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 a different, it's a culture. Absolutely. It's, uh, hard for people to understand that sometimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fortunately, I, I uh, myself understand that. How, um, so how did, how did sign language play in your, role as becoming a, an actor. How did that? Oh my God, listen, when I grew up, I grew up in the 50s in Chicago, okay? And uh, I love music. My mother bought me my first guitar, record player, all that stuff. But in 1956, Love Me Tender came out, starring Elvis Presley, okay? And my mother loved music, even though she couldn't hear it anymore. But she remembered the hoopla around Frank Sinatra when she was a kid like in the 40s when he played at the Chicago Theater and stuff. I think she even went there to see him. So we knew that he was on Elvis, uh, he was on Ed Sullivan. And uh, we watched that. And I was very excited about this Elvis Presley. And years later, when the Beatles came out, my mother bought me tickets to go see the Beatles. She was very supportive about anything that had to do with music. But nice. so around the corner from where we lived in Humboldt Park was a place called the Vision Theater on Division Street. And Love Me Tender was playing there. So my mother said, we got to go. So the tours went to see that movie. My first experience in a movie theater, as I was just, we were just talking about, close up on the screen was black and white movie, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was just, no, I think it was in color by that time. But it was just so, so real, so close. And I had to sit next to my mother and there was no closed caption. There was no, I had to interpret the whole freaking movie to my mother in the theater. It was a very close, connected, intimate experience. Elvis Presley in an in a, in a adult-themed movie uh, with sexual content almost, and yet not, and Cowboys and Indians in a very adult theme. And I was used to going to that theater, you'd pay 25 cents to watch cartoons all day long, 100 right. cartoons this Saturday, you know. So here I am with my mother. Uh, love me tender, man, the music, everything. And on the way back home, we were so connected, so, such a beautiful, I was so connected to her because I had to act out the whole movie for her. Yeah. In, in the so ever since then, I was just enthralled with uh, that feeling of that, being a, a cathartic experience and also yet emoting something from the screen into my mother's 
vibration and she was really getting the whole story rather than sit there and not even know what the story was about. My father used to watch TV just to watch it, but he never understood what was going on. So when The Fugitive came out with David Jansen, that was his favorite show, I'd sit there and interpret David, you know, the whole The Fugitive, Bonanza. Otherwise, oh, wow. we'd make a big joke about it. Like uh, I asked my dad, what do you think they're talking about? And I said, he'd tell me, I don't know, maybe they're talking about, <laughs> he had no idea. So I'd, I would interpret those stories for him. And so naturally, uh, when I discovered acting, I, I started playing music and got into bands and I got this connection with the audience. Um, I got that de definitely from my parents. So I was trying to convey hearing culture to them. Look what we're looking at, mom. You know, when I saw the Beatles, my mom was thrilled because I, I, oh my God, what an experience that was. Very emotional connection to music, you know. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Like, you were part of the industry before you even knew you were part of the industry. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. uh, did, have you ever had like performance anxiety before you get on stage or get in front of the camera or does that ever happen? Oh yeah, of course. That's crazy. Um, I, I'm, I've done a lot of stage plays. I've done children of a lesser God. I've done a lot of work for deaf West theater out here. And um, that, I guess that's kind of, natural but uh if you're a, a if you're professional about it and you do the work you just have to i think you even mentioned a little while ago you just have to, you, you have to just let it go and not even think about it anymore it's got to just come through you but uh, of course before a big show will i feel anxiety and uh my i'll get distracted of course but uh once your that camera goes on once you're in front of an audience um there's something that you're able to uh channel that energy that nervous energy into delivering it and being present with everybody that's there at the show and for this movie you just had to be present with Riz Ahmed who's a wonderful actor uh and we were there just being present with each other supporting each other and and the nervousness you isn't even there you're just being real you know yeah yeah that was I mean, watching you and and the whole dynamic of that those scenes were just, it was awesome. It was really neat. I have to say one of the things, I, I don't know if it was planned and I don't know if it was in the script, but um, we, and, and you are probably like my wife. We, we have everything with, with captions or subtitles in our, in our film or when we watch a film. Um, but we were noticing there were some parts where there was no subtitles there, there right. were certain parts where when he lost his hearing we could still kind of hear some things going on but the subtitles were gone also when he was deaf and then he was in your group uh or you know or joe's group and there was signing going wrong but he had no idea what was being said there was no sign, no, no subtitles. Right. I thought that was amazing. Like, did Good they plan you. that or? Good for you because you know why? Because the director, Darius Martyr, is a genius. He's really a wonderful filmmaker, but he wanted to put you um, in the headset of Ruben. So he, Ruben's on for most of the, the whole movie. He's got, he's in every scene, you know, it's like Hamlet, Hamlet's on in every scene. So that's yeah. the one who type roles. Um, so, you're supposed to be looking at this film, if I may, if you've already got it, through his head. So naturally, um, if there's no subtitles there, he doesn't know what's going on. He's thrown into this community. And there's almost in another kind of an indirect way as the audience, you know, deaf people are going, well, how do you like it now? We have to watch every movie. Like my mom in 1956 watching Elvis Presley, no subtitles, how is she supposed to? So how do you like it now with the shoes on the other foot? Right. That's another way of looking at it. But Darius is just trying to get you to, to understand what he's going through. And so that's when I noticed um, when you see, when you make a movie, um, a lot of it ends up on the cutting room floor almost because there's so much they shoot and then that you only see, otherwise it would be a four hour movie. However, right. you can see how he edited that movie that it's all coming from Ruben's perspective. So that is a very striking part of the movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Frustrating in a way, you know. Yeah. As a person. 
Yeah, that was, it was amazing just to see that, that, that whole thing play out. It was really good. Right. Um, uh, so a uh, little bit of fun for our podcast. We ask our listeners and uh, other folks to let us know what some of their favorite movies are. And we feature certain actors sometimes. And this week we featured Chevy Chase. Ah. Did you happen to have a favorite film that Chevy Chase is in? I, the, the, the first thing I think, I love Chevy Chase, uh, but the first thing I thought of was uh, The Three Amigos. Ah, yes. That's absolutely, because there's, the three of those guys are hilarious. I love Martin Short, Steve Martin, genius. Oh. And uh, so, Chevy Chase's perfect tongue-in-cheek, so I was, uh, but also I was a big Fletch fan, and, and yes. of course, all the vacation movies, you cannot deny but I, for, for my money, it's The Three Amigos. I watch that anytime. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, w- we, we picked that character or that, that actor because the week before, we had all, the, the whole cast watched Three Amigos. <laughs> so no. we were like, we must have Chevy Chase on that. <laughs> yeah. And it's also that, that whole, uh, if you, I grew up watching the Marx Brothers and the Three Stooges, and it's definitely oh, yes. a little takeoff on that kind of thing. And it's just so wonderful if you enjoy that kind of craziness. Uh, it makes me want to go watch that again. That's a good one. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I, I, I don't know what it's on. I think it's Amazon, but you still have to rent it. It's like a dollar or something oh, perfect, like that. Perfect. But, yeah. yeah. Um, also, favorite film of all time. Do you have one? Uh, it's, that's so, there's so many. I, I was trying to think of what really struck me as a boy. The thing that made me... Uh, Movies are so romantic, and some of them hit you so hard in a romantic kind of a way. Or, a, and for, I, for me, uh, I always think of The Searchers with John Wayne, uh, just an old, old Western tough guy, John Wayne, who's uh, a bigot against uh, Native Americans, and uh, this girl gets kidnapped and. As a boy, it just took me away and made it made me. And you know, I can look at it now, and, and you know, it's kind of crude. And John Wayne's reputation is is not that good right now, right? Uh, for his uh, own real bigotry and racism. But yeah. that movie, as a boy, struck me so real that it just uh, scarred me uh, in a way. Uh, or even uh, Old Yeller with Gregory Peck, where they have to. Uh, uh, shoot the dough at the end of the uh the movie those yeah. movies just made me forget that i was watching a movie and they're i was just a little boy you know so i love that kind of stuff excellent uh is that so i'm guessing like like that and and the the elvis film kind of got you into wanting to make film is that would that would you say that's true yeah, or at least wanting to be a performer of some kind because i would always perform music for my mom and then uh like uh, you know uh paul anka frank sinatra i'd be singing them right. and signing them for her trying to give her a flavor of what it would be like then later on the beatles and then when i i went to vietnam and came back and then i started doing uh rock and roll bands and my mother would sneak into the clubs and watch us perform we used to do aerosmith david bowie uh, ted nugent and I look in the back of the club, there's my deaf mother drinking a, a, a highball with the bartender going like this. I was, because she just wanted to see what I was doing, you know, but she couldn't hear anything. But the music was so loud. So the band I have right now, uh, it's a Black Sabbath tribute band. And a lot of deaf people come to watch our show because it's, uh, the Black Sabbath lyrics are very uh, prolific. They look great in sign language. And it's loud and good and vibrational for deaf people, so they enjoy it. So you sign while you sing. Are you you a singer? Is that right? I, I, I'm a singer. I have a headset on, and I sign while I'm singing the songs. Yeah, wow. and I have a Black Sabbath tribute band that that is really hot. Really what's the good. What's the name of the band? Hands of Doom. Oh, oh I love Hands it. Hands of Doom, Black Sabbath tribute band, right here in Los Angeles. Oh, rock on. Very Except cool. all the bars are closed right now. Right. So that's a little tough. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Well, um, 
I had a few other questions, but I mean, I know time time is actually getting quite a, kind of short here. Um, sure. One thing. Uh, well, okay, two more things. What, what would you put on your gag reel of life? What would be something that would be the most comical thing you look back and you're like, why, why? Oh, I, uh, probably uh, just the way uh, I've interpreting from my parents and how things were always misunderstood when I didn't know what was going on, you know, like uh, uh, in the middle of a conversation about uh, uh, just the simple things like, you know, you're trying to buy a car, make a transaction with somebody and they're saying, well, there's interest on the car. And I'm like, well, yeah, my dad's interested in the car. I don't even know what interest is on money <laughs> or uh, uh, yeah, dealing at the death club when they had to rent the space from the guy. The, the guy says to me, uh, so your father can't hear anything? And so I, he, I say, he wants to know if you can't hear anything, if you've ever heard anything in your life. And my father says, not yet. And I go, <laughs> my father says, so far, not, there's nothing coming through, you know. So those kind of things, I, I was so awkward. Uh, my blooper would be full of stuff that uh, <laughs> uh, just trying to understand what was going on between the hearing world and the deaf world, you know. Yeah. Um, Language is a, a thing. Yeah. It's crazy, especially English. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. especially, especially English. Yeah. Um, so I guess what is next for you? What do you got in the well, works? Just, uh, right now is a very exciting time. Uh, it just came out the movie. There's a lot of reviews out there. Uh, I'm waiting to see what my next project will be. Right now, I'm just... Uh, in rehearsal mode with my band, we're socially distancing and keeping the band tight. But when the bars open up again, I have a very, very tight band right now. That's all I can say. But we got, nice. we're all tightened up and nowhere to go. Right. <laughs> so uh, I love that band. And so that's what I'm doing right now. As far as acting goes, I'm just waiting to see uh, what the next offer will be. And I'm just enjoying the ride. Wonderful. Absolutely. Well, all right. Uh, so folks, uh, check it out. Amazon Prime Video, uh, The Sound of Metal. Uh, our, our good friend here, Paul Racy, is in it. He plays the character Joe. It's worth it. Check it out. And if you already have Prime, it won't cost you anything more. So check it out. Yeah.